Hi, my name is Jeff Solheim with Solheim Enterprises, and welcome to our Trauma Certified Registered Nurse or TCRN exam review course. Now, the five P's of orthopedic assessment um, can be used to identify compartment syndrome. I'm sure you're all familiar with the five P's. They're listed in your manual. Um, and just so that you know, the five P's actually occur in order. And I've listed them in your manual in the right order, and I'm going to present them to you in the order that they tend to occur. From the first P to occur early in compartment syndrome to the last P to occur late in compartment syndrome. So let's go through the P's. The first P is pain. Pain tends to be a very early indicator of compartment syndrome. The pain may be described as this deep, taut, throbbing, pressure-like pain, very uncomfortable, not easily relieved by standard analgesia. It's made worse by movement, even passive movement. You know, have the patient just, you know, if they have compartment syndrome in their arm, if you move their hand, that shouldn't hurt them. But with compartment syndrome, they may find pain when you move their hand. Or if they have compartment uh, syndrome in the leg, then of course, by moving the foot. Um, if you look at the screen, there's a young man there who has compartment syndrome in his left arm. Can you see the compartment syndrome? Look at how fat that, that uh, forearm is. And there's bleeding in there from a wound that's causing a compartment syndrome. Um, now, you know, he's going to experience significant pain in that arm uh, because of all that blood accumulating in the arm. Now, after pain comes paresthesia, the second P. This is a bit of a later finding. This one involves compression of the nerves, and it, um, it may be described as a sensation of pins and needles that starts distal to the injury and moves towards it. So as the um, injury worsens or the compartment pressure um, increases, the pins and needles are going to keep moving either you know, um, down the arm or up the leg. And that's your second finding. Now, your third finding, and this one's considered a very late finding. This one is where you're starting to get into a lot of problem is paralysis. Now, the pressure inside the compartment's got to be pretty significant to cause enough pressure to, um, to cause the nerve impulses to be blocked. But at this point, nerve impulses are um, interrupted due to the pressure, and the patient may have this sensation like the limb just gave out, that there's no strength left in the limb. Look at the young man on the screen, how he can't even hold his left hand up any longer. It is a poor indicator of outcome if you wait for this one. It's considered a very late finding. So an even later and more serious finding, which often has a poor outcome, is pallor, the fourth P. Now, pallor would indicate that there's an obstruction um, in the um, arterial circulation, um, and that's decreasing oxygen delivery. And in that case, the tissue may actually not survive in the distal end. So that, that's why this is considered a very late and, and uh, often terminal finding. Now, if the limb is elevated, it will tend to be pale. If the limb is hanging, it'll tend to be dusky. Um, and um, th again, this is considered a very late finding. Now, an even later finding, in fact, this one's almost silly to teach, but it is a P. The fifth P is pulselessness. Think about it. What would the pressure inside the compartment have to be for the limb to be pulseless? Well, in order to be pulseless, the pressure inside the limb would have to exceed your systolic pressure. So if your patient's pressure, a systolic pressure is 120 millimeters of mercury and there's no pulse, that means the pressure in the limb blocking the blood flow has to be around or above systolic pressure. Now, remember what we talked about in the neuro section that any compartment pressure above 20 is considered elevated. So if a patient's, you know, um, pressures are um, um, enough in the compartment to be pulseless, they far exceeded compartment syndrome. I mean, they had compartment syndrome way back at 20. Now we're talking about pressures in the compartment up in the, in the systolic range. So th this is obviously a very, very late finding. You do not wait for pulselessness. It's considered the the last or latest finding to occur. Speaking of the five P's, look at this ad we found. The three P's at Grinelli's. Pizza, patio, beer. I don't know. I guess beer makes you pee. I don't know.